Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'll show you the repair and restoration of a Nico Alpha 440 power amplifier that was built in 1980. At the end of the repair and restoration, I'll hook this Nico Alpha 440 power amplifier into a system and give it a listen. Thanks again and enjoy the video. If you enjoy vintage audio equipment, you've come to the right spot. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell as well as giving me a big thumbs up if you like this video and share it with others. This Nico Alpha 440 power amplifier is about 40 years old and it's in need of some service. Um, you know, she's a little bit beat up, a little bit scratched up. Uh, the top cover is intact, um, but it's got some scratches and little dings here and there. Uh, the bottom cover is intact. Uh, also, you know, some scrapes down there, but nothing too bad. Now, when I remove the top cover, as you should do, you should take a look at any unknown piece of uh, vintage electronics before you power it up. I took off the top cover, and I can see there's going to be plenty of cleaning to do. Um, almost all vintage audio repair restoration involve a lot of cleaning, and certainly this uh, Alpha 440 is uh, no exception. Uh, pretty much everywhere in the chassis, there's years of dirt and grime. This was sitting somewhere where it just was, was a dust collector for many years. Um, I've now removed the bottom cover, and the same story here. Just going to be a lot of cleaning to do. Uh, you can kind of see the heat sink in the power uh, transistor assembly there, and it's just, just covered. Just everything is covered with grime. Um, I'm going to take this uh, outside uh, to clean up, obviously. You don't want to blow all that stuff inside your, uh, inside your work area, so... I, I'm going to take it outside to clean it up. Um, I removed all the heavy grime and the dirt. I didn't get in there and give it a good cleaning, but just get the, get the worst of it out of it. And then uh, brought it back in, and I'm going to power it up with a Variac and a dim bulb tester. Because again, I don't know, you know, this this amplifier looks like it could have been sitting, you know, been sitting around for 20 plus years. Who knows? So it's always better to, uh, you know, be somewhat cautious with any unknown piece of uh, vintage audio equipment. Um, I'll be re replacing those 40-year-old uh, electrolytic capacitors that I always harp on um, with some modern, high-quality ones. Um, you know, it's just it's just the leading cause of circuit failure in vintage audio equipment. And sometimes they fail, and they may be easily replaced, but they can cause extensive damage to maybe some components that aren't so easy to get. Um, I've removed the faceplate. Um, you know, I'm going to have to pretty much disassemble it to clean it up and, uh, you know, it's just going to be much easier to clean up and, uh, just get all that grime out of there. Um, you know, you, you can see that, you know, in this picture here, what I did, I just took my finger and, and ran it down the, uh, ran it down the LED, uh, meter assembly and you can, you can see the level of, uh, grime that needs to be cleaned up. Um, you know, the power supply in any piece of audio equipment is, is the most important assembly, and many times the one that um, is under the most stress. So, you know, you've got to make sure the power supply is uh, working well. Um, you know, if, if you're lucky, the unit just doesn't work if something goes wrong, and if you're unlucky, a power supply failure can, can cause uh, extensive damage. So... Once again, um, you know, I'm going to get those 40-year-old electrolytic capacitors uh, replaced, and then uh, hopefully this amplifier, uh, you know, will be able to start its next 40 years. Um, I'll also, like on almost all of my repair restorations, while you have these assemblies out, why not just take a look at the artwork side of the assemblies for any uh, solder joint issues? Um, I didn't see anything in this particular unit, but it's always good to, to take a look. Um, I'm going to do the uh, capacitor changes on the uh, main amp assembly. Um, you know, again, this, this, this unit you know, was pretty easy to, to get at. It had enough slack in the cables uh, to where uh, you could get the assemblies where you needed them. Um, this amplifier also has bipolar capacitors, 
and those should be replaced just like if they were electrolytics so I'll change those out um, I've gotten the uh, main amp assembly uh, reinstalled after doing the uh, upgrade work and uh, hopefully like I say this will make this amplifier reliable for uh, decades to come um, I've started now to remove the heat sink assemblies um, out of the Alpha 440. Um, they're pretty dirty. It's, it's, you know, the whole thing's pretty dirty. Everything you touched or took out, you saw layers and layers of, uh, of dirt to clean up. Um, you know, with the heat sinks, I removed the heat sink assembly, and once I remove that, then I'm able to access the power transistors and the interface assembly that connects them to the heat sink. Um, with the heat sink assembly removed, uh, the, or rather the interface assembly removed from the heat sink, I'll be able to clean it up and inspect the artwork side of that also for any issues. Um, you know, taking this apart like this, it's the best thing is put in some new insulators, put in some new thermal compound on those output transistors. Again, all that stuff's 40 years old. Um, it's all dried out. Um, you know, if you can keep those uh, transistors running cool, there's a good chance they'll, uh, you know, literally last forever. So that's what we're going to try to do. Um, you know, the old insulators are going to be removed from the heat sink assembly. You can see them still kind of stuck there if you look real close. And after cleaning uh, the heat sink assembly, I'll install the transistors along with uh, new insulators and thermal compound. Uh, I've got the transistors, I've uh, got the old compound uh, removed from the uh, output transistors. And so, uh, getting closer here, it just takes time, you know, it, it, it just does. It, it's not a fast process, but you just got to go along and do it because it needs to be done. Um, I've cleaned up the artwork side, you may, may have remembered all that dirt and stuff there, uh, and inspected the uh, transistor assembly for any solder joint issues. Again, I didn't see anything. So, um, got the heat, single, uh, heat sink assembly uh, cleaned up. And again, lots of cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Talk about cleaning, right? It's because, you know, there's just so much of it in these units, and especially this one. And uh, here are the new insulators uh, for the new transistors, and hopefully these will go 40 years like the other ones did. I've reassembled the uh, power transistor heatsink assembly, and I'm about ready to install it back into the chassis. Um, the power transistors are the original ones that left Japan 40 years ago. And as I said, hopefully they'll go another 40. Um, there's two electrolytic capacitors on the output uh, transistor assembly. And uh, I re I'm going to replace those. And what I uh, ended up replacing those with were uh, uh, K-MIT uh, film capacitors. Sometimes I do that, small electrolytic capacitors. Um, I'll sometimes replace uh, ones that are in the signal path with, uh, with film capacitors, and I did in this case. Um, at the back of the Alpha 440 sits the input assembly, which also needs attention. You know, everything just needs attention, right? I mean, the front of the unit, the back of the unit, you name it. So once removed from the chassis, the level controls and the direct normal switch can be cleaned with deoxit. Um, there was one bipolar capacitor that was replaced. Um, so this capacitor happens to be in the audio path, so it can make a, dis di a difference in the amp sound. I mean, once again, it's only one cap, but you leave it there, and uh, what are you going to, you know, you don't know. So it's, it's silly not to get in there and get that changed out. Even though it's only one capacitor, you don't want to leave that in for another 40 years, because there's no way it's going to make it. So with the back panel down, um, of course, what do I find? You know, more grime to clean up, but no surprise there. Uh, I've got that cleaned up, uh, and, and like I say, we're getting closer here as as I go along. Um, you know, there's um, you know a little bit of an interesting warning on the back. You, you know, on on all equipment, there's a caution. Um, on it, but um, this one has a warning, hazardous energy. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that quite, that worded quite like that, but um, you know, that was a little bit different. And uh, the speaker connectors needed to be cleaned up. 
you know, once once again, you know, I mean, everything's dirty and hasn't been touched in probably 40 years. Uh, the relay assembly had only one electrolytic capacitor on it, and that was replaced. Um, you know, again, it doesn't seem like it's important, but almost all these electrolytic capacitors are going to fail. You know, they're, they're failing faster now. You know, I mean, they've been in these uh, vintage units for decades, and they're all going to fail. And leaving even one behind um, would be a mistake. So I got that one out of there. Um, I've reassembled, uh, I've reinstalled the assemblies and tie wrap the cabling back up neatly. You should always do that. You know, anything, you know, you're going to have to undo some, some tie wraps and, uh, you just put it back neat. You know, you put it back like you found it, I guess is the point. Now I'm going to take it to the bench. I think we're ready. And I'm going to use a couple 300 ohm, three, uh, uh, I mean, eight ohm, 300 watt load resistors for the bench testing. And, um, you know, everything looked good. Um, you know, looked good and solid. I left it up there for a few hours. Um, I went ahead after, you know, doing some bench testing. You know, I, I mean, just let it sit there two or three hours. I ended up setting the uh, bias and the DC offset um, to spec. And, um, you know, I mean, it, I did a little bit of uh, preliminary testing on the test bench. It sounded good. So uh, about ready to wrap this up. So this Nico Alpha 440 power amplifier repair and restoration is complete. It's time for some music. This is the Nico 440 power amplifier that you just saw in the previous video. I have it up and running. I have it hooked up to a Sansui CA2000 preamplifier. I just want to show you up close how nicked up, how beat up uh, this amplifier was. And if you watched the video, you saw what the inside looked like too. Um, but there's no reason now that this amplifier can't run reliably for decades more. Um, if you ever find one out there, you know, Nico doesn't bring the kind of money Pioneer, Sansui, or, or uh, Marantz does, but if you happen to find one out there, don't hesitate buying it. It sounds great, and, you know, you won't be disappointed in it. And uh, the thing's built like a tank, just like everything was back 40 years ago. So working on a project like this, uh, it's very rewarding because it's not cosmetically perfect and never will be. So thank Thank you for viewing and if uh, you like this video please uh, give me a big thumbs up down below and also a subscription if you're not already a subscriber thank you